Uh, welcome to Common Sense, the program produced by the Berkshire Democratic Brigades. Uh, my name is Frank Farkas, and we're very happy today to have as our guest Mark Brodeur, who is a nurse currently at uh, Berkshire Medical Center. And Mark, I'm, I'm looking at your um, history. It's really impressive. You've been a nurse at the Berkshire Medical Center for 10 years now? I've worked for the hospital for 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. You've survived uh, a very, very difficult uh, career um, and 10 years at, at the Berkshire Medical Center. Now, you've worked um, in a number of different departments. You've worked in the emergency department, I see, uh, for five years and uh, the intensive care unit uh, at, during the night shift. And currently, you're working at the post-anesthesia care is division or unit, department yeah. unit okay um, being a nurse is a is a very very difficult profession um, people um, like us who are consumers of, of medical care I've always been impressed by the um, the amount of skill the devotion and um, the sacrifices that nurses make um, uh, as part of their profession um, tell us how difficult is it to be a nurse today, and what are the um, kind of conditions you face as a nurse working day-to-day uh, -to -day at the Berkshire Medical Center? Um, there are a lot, of, a lot of difficulties that we face in nursing today. Um, the charting system, electronics, um, patients who um, have vast uh, medical complications, okay. complicated families. Um, and everyone's worried, so it adds that whole extra layer on top of everything else. Um, just trying to meet the needs of all of your patients. We yes. have um, more patients per nurse, um, which makes things more difficult. Um, trying to pull computer from room to room as we do our charting and um, interact with our patients, trying to make sure that each patient gets the time and the care that they need, um, which is important to all nurses. Mm -hmm. um, is something we really strive to do. Yeah, you mentioned a uh, ratio of um, uh, patients to, to nurses, and I know that um, you're currently in negotiation, really at an impasse with the management at Berkshire Medical Center. Um, the main issue, from my understanding, is, is exactly that, that issue of the ratio, the number of patients that you're expected to take care of uh, um, on, on a, simultaneously on your shift. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Why is that such an important issue for the nurses currently, and why has that become the number one issue for them? Um, I think generally, if you look at the research nationwide, there's hundreds of articles that explain how um, every additional patient a nurse has, it increases their chance of mortality or chance of dying. Okay. Um, so as a nurse, as being responsible for those patients, uh, that you know means a lot to me. and. I think specifically for this county, this is my community, my family members, um, my friends, my coworkers. We all use uh, Birch Medical Center for our for our health care, for our emergencies, for our treatment. Um, so having appropriate staffing in place is is really really important to us because we live here, where this is our community. We take a lot of pride in our work. We work very hard. Um, and we want to make sure that we have the resources we need to do the job that we know we can do and that our patients deserve. Yeah. Um, could you characterize, I, I know one of the uh, talking points that the union has made is that the population that you have to take care of now is an older and a sicker population, which adds to the burden and is an argument why the ratio should, uh, should be adjusted to the difficulty of handling particular patients. Talk a little bit about the kind of patients, the conditions they're in when you see them, uh, either in the intensive care unit or on the general f hospital floors. What are, what are they like now? And I know we have an opioid crisis, so that, yeah. of course, adds to the, plus the burden of the fact that the hospital was closed in North Adams. And I'm sure that impinges on the difficulty of working at the Berkshire Medical Center today. Could you talk a little bit about that? Um, so we do see more patients. Obviously, okay. they can't go to the North Adams Hospital anymore other right. than the satellite facility for the emergency department. Um, any admissions from there come to us. Um, I think overall, the community is, is aging. I okay. think that's um, we know that. during mm -hmm. um, when, they, when they had the um, Eversource conversation, everyone said, the research says that our community is aging. Okay. Um, when we look at our patients, they're all getting older. 
um, they have more complications. They have diabetes, heart disease, um, increased risk for stroke. Okay. And, and those are all little things that you need to kind of pay attention to and make sure you understand how they affect the other systems in your body and how they affect your, your treatment, the different medications that you're on, right. um, and kind of looking at the picture as a whole with all these extra complications um, it, it just uh, makes it really important to have the time for each person to go through everything, make sure that all your bases are covered. Sure. Um, you know, people have maybe have uh, unrealistic notions of what a, um, a, certainly a registered nurse is responsible for today. I know paperwork is an extremely large part of your responsibilities, the accountability. Um, so um, if you think of a nurse as just somebody who comes by your bed and checks on your condition, it's a much more complex um, task today to be a nurse, I assume. What, what are the, if you go to the list of, on a daily basis, what do you have to do with each patient? Um, what, what, what are the responsibilities? So um, charting is a big part of what charting. we do. Okay. Um, as nurses, we would like patient care to be our primary concern. We, okay. we want to be okay, in the room, course. talking with the patient, right. learning about right. them, right. helping them with difficult times, holding their hand, right. making right. sure that their care is completed. Um, in addition to that, we have to um, do assessments and write notes. Okay. Okay. Um, in the computer, so we have yeah. to pull a computer yeah. from yeah. room to room. Usually, yeah. we have to administer all the medications. Um, we have to round with the doctors to make sure that okay. we're up to date on what the plan of care is for the patient. Right. Um, advocate for the patient if it seems like uh, the plan has changed or the patient wants something different than where the medical team is going. Um, just to make sure that the patient's voice is always heard, because sometimes right. the patient's so ill, right. they their voice might get lost in the situation. Okay. So it's a big part of what nursing okay. does. Yeah, now uh, another aspect of the job that I'm aware of, um, maybe you want to add that, is that you have to prepare uh, a patient for discharge, an extremely important responsibility, because if, if it isn't done properly and the patient goes home and doesn't get the care they need, uh, either from uh, uh, healthcare uh, inpatient um, or in-home service, and they don't understand, how, the family doesn't understand, for example, wound care, um, the, the patient could wind up being re-hospitalized. Can you talk a little, a little um, bit about so that? That brings up a lot of different complicated issues. Sure. Uh, um, the plan of discharge should start when the patient's admitted. That, okay. That very first day. Okay. Um, you should think about what that patient's going to need when they leave. Right. Um, the type of services, maybe they'll need visiting nurse or uh, home health aid. Um, maybe they just need more family support. Um, and really going over any medication changes, medications that they were on that maybe um, need to be addressed or changed. Um, any um, changes from additional blood labs or anything that was done during the hospital that, that uh, bring up new uh, diagnoses or problems that the patient wasn't previously aware of. And going over all of those in detail in a way that the patient can understand, because not everyone sure. is well versed sure. with you know, sure. uh, medical issues. Um, making sure the patient has a firm grasp of that and then also having contact people um, that can help the patient um, explain the issues, right. make sure right. that they're on track right. with their care when they leave the hospital, yeah. so when they, yeah. they yeah. so that they don't get readmitted yeah. Yeah. for the same yeah. problem, they can actually yeah. properly take care of themselves. Yeah. Um, what What is the danger if you don't have if there are too many patients and you don't have enough time to give them the attention they need? What can go wrong? If you have situations where um, you've come close to, to a, a, a kind of a dangerous situation and nurses like yourself experience those kind of, um, you know, getting to the edge where something bad can happen if you don't have the time to, to pay a, the attention to a patient they need. That results in situations, I'm hearing from the union that um, complaints are, um, nurses, when they're in that kind of a situation and they realize that because they're being overtaxed, they have too much work, that they've approached a dangerous juncture. They write reports and they try to tell the management that this is, you know, I've had this situation um, and um, I'm, I'm alerting the hospital that unless m we get more of the resources we need, bad things can happen. There could be bad outcomes. How often do those kind of reports get filed with the hospital? Should the management be aware that nurses uh, are overtaxed and unable to provide 
the, um, the kind of help to patients that they need to, to so they remain safe. I think um, there was maybe a well over 700 in about an 18 month period okay. of those reports. Okay. Um, generally they're vastly un underreported. Um, nurses by nature do uh, what they can with what they have. They, um, they pull together, they work together, and it's just more and more getting to the point where even using all of our resources, all of our teamwork, it's not enough to cover up the gaps. Um, I've, I've been in situations when I've worked in the emergency room where I've had 17 patients at one time, wow. one of which was a Spanish-only speaking woman, um, elderly, presented with uh, generalized symptoms, and it turns out she was having a type of heart attack. And had I not spent the time with her, it, like even though I had 16 other patients, that something like that could have been missed. Um, so it's okay. something that weighs okay. heavily on my mind and the mind of all nurses because you want to make sure you're providing the best care. You want to make sure you're not missing things. And as we're stretched thinner and thinner, the likelihood of something falling through I the cracks see. increases. And I don't want that for my family. I don't want that for my friends. I don't want that for my community. Of course. Um, so if we have the resources that we need to make sure that each patient gets the care that they need, um, I just I think that things would overall be a lot safer. We have handed in those um, unsafe staffing reports. Oh, they're called unsafe our, staffing reports. Our okay. um, chief financial officer, um, Diane Kelly, said that she has never received a single one of them. How could um, she? How could she say that? It was in the it was in the Berkshire Eagle wow. that she it was she was quoted as saying that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I don't know where they go. Yeah. And luckily they had they sent copies to the directors of whichever unit and also the MA. So the MA had the backup documents to say that they did exist. Okay. Um, otherwise I guess they would have just yeah. been gone. Yeah. One of the the management has characterized um, the positions that the union has taken in in, um, in negotiating currently as being um, kind of um, imposed on, on the local nurses by the Massachusetts Nurses Association because they have a particular agenda. Um, what can you say, and th they'll argue that nurses really um, are not responding to their, um, uh, their own observations of the conditions in the hospital, and yet um, uh, all these reports are filed. How can they maintain that? And what would you say about how, how, um, how widespread is the feeling among the nurses that, that um, this issue of patient safety is, is an extremely important issue and does it come from their own experiences rather than being imposed by the um, Massachusetts Nurses Association because of their own um, uh, you know, lobbying efforts to, to, in the state, they're, they're currently going to be um, supporting a, um, a ballot initiative, mm -hmm. I understand, that would um, uh, require all hospitals to um, improve the um, patient safety by reducing the number of patients that yeah. each nurse is responsible for. So um, tell us more about how the local negotiating team arrived at patient safety as its number one issue. Um, so our committee is made up of uh, 15 nurses. Okay. They um, are nurses that work here at BMC. Um, they were elected into that position by the membership as a whole, the other um, 800 nurses or 616 okay. that have the voting rights. Okay. Um, so that, that um, committee then goes out and um, polls the, all the other nurses and said, be prior to negotiations, what are your issues? Okay. What do you want addressed here? Right. Overwhelmingly, um, it, was, it, was, it was staffing. It was people wanted to make sure that at least they had the nurses that the hospital said they should have, okay. the nursing assistants that they th said they should have. Um, a, a safe working environment with the number of people that the hospital deemed as safe. Um, and so we, uh, we, we went for that and then also um, they wanted not to have uh, reduced insurance benefits um, to help maintain, um, retain, and attract new employees to the okay. area to help. So that was the second, the second issue yeah. was was the cost of uh, health care insurance. So those are our two main issues: is, is patient okay. safety is number one, okay. and then okay. second to that would be yeah. the health yeah. insurance changes. Yeah. Um, the hospital maintains that they offered a um, a package that was that involved a ten percent increase. Although I looked at the math, it didn't seem to add up. They talked about two percent and two percent, and then one percent which to me adds up to 5%, but I don't know whether they, um, because of compounding, it, was it really a 10% increase that the 
hospital had, had um, offered? So they offered a 1% in the first year, 1% okay. in the second year, and a 2% okay. in the okay. third year. Yeah. Um, and then there's also um, step raises that nurses get based on skill level. Okay. So as, as you go on in your nursing career, Okay. Okay. A, but so they get, were combined, even though that they that's in the contract already. That's not negotiable. Like that already exists. Uh, um, they were saying they were offering to that, but that's already that's already part of what what happened. So okay, they were just okay, offering the four okay, percent raise. Okay. Um, but money isn't really our issue. Um, the nurses actually turned down the um, their their offer in lieu of to have safe staffing. They uh, more than eight sacrifice. out of ten nurses uh -huh. um, of the five hundred who voted, which is record turnout. Yes, um, I saw. Yeah. At our hospital said that they they wanted their, their concerns actually acknowledged. Because okay. at this time okay. any sort of un, yeah. unsafety unsafe staffing patterns aren't even acknowledged as a problem existing right. at BMC, right. regardless right. of what the nurses yeah. say. Yeah. So so management um, you've gone to management actually it looks like for a number of years. This is not a new issue in the hospital. Um, and they've never made really, um, correct me if I'm wrong, any concessions. They've never um, met you halfway in terms of those um, staffing ratios. The uh, staffing ratios actually got a little worse in 2016. They actually got worse? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And I understand also uh, the, the union has said, and correct me again if I'm wrong, that um, if the, in, the, the, the increase in the cost of, the, um, of your health care benefits would wipe out any increase in, in salaries. Correct. So, You'd be just treading water. We really wouldn't get any yeah. any advance at all. Yeah, you know, in in um, preparing for this um, uh, interview, I I found uh, some interesting material, and I'd, I'd I'd love to share it with you. The um, Scientific American uh, published this was a couple of years ago a study about um, they entitled it "Widespread Understaffing of Nurses Increases Risk to Patients," and I find this fascinating because. Um, it's, a, it's a nationwide problem. It, it's not just here in Massachusetts or certainly not just here in, in the Berkshires. Um, it, it's everywhere. Um, if management major concern is the bottom line, um, their position is always that it's not cost effective to hire additional nurses. So they don't create enough positions. There's no shortage. I know the, it's very often said that um, there's a shortage of nurses. There is no shortage. There's a sh shortage of positions to hire those nurses to fill because hospitals have been cutting back nationwide. The one exception um, is California. In California, I believe 2003, said yes, we are going to establish minimum ratios. R nurses should not be overburdened and should not have more than X number of patients per, and it depended on the unit. Of course, in, in intensive care, smaller number of yeah. patients in the general uh, floors, uh, general medical floors, larger, but it was uh, geared to the difficulty of handling of any particular patients, the, the acuity of the patient. They found um, that by, by reducing the amount of, of, of um, patients per nurses that they lowered the rates of post-surgery infections, they had fewer adverse events, they reduced readmissions uh, which, by the way, if the hospitals want to be um, cost effective, reducing the burdens on nurses can actually save them money because readmissions are, are costly. Is and correct? They don't get reimbursed for readmissions. And they don't get reimbursed. In fact, there's a penalty under yeah. the uh, Obamacare, I believe, against hospitals. They, they found that, um, that um, an issue I wasn't even aware of, violence against nurses is, is a major issue. Maybe you could talk about that. Um, they found that percent that the incidence of violence as nurses reduced when nurses were less burdened and could pay more attention to their to their patients, um, and they found fewer uh, intensive care uh, days. The, the number the um, uh, days on the intensive care units re were reduced, um, and um, they found. I believe, or I, I may have um, uh, um, interpolated this, that there was improved recruitment and retention of, nur of nurses. When working conditions become better, um, nurses are more likely to stay on the job. That's true. And turn over. So when a hospital is willing to invest in their core staff, their nursing staff, um, and uh, really put that investment into their community, um, attract nurses, put it into their patients, um, they, do, they do have 
decreased risk of infection. Okay. Um, okay. Nurses are able to make more of a connection with their patient. They're able sure. to get to know them better. Uh, they're able to help de-escalate them if there is a problem that comes up um, so that there's less risk of violence. Okay, and violence is an issue locally too. I think we talked about this before before this interview. Um, uh, with, the, with the opioid crisis, are you seeing uh, more aggressive behavior from some patients? Can you talk about that? Are you I think generally with addiction, um, when people are withdrawing from any substance, uh, their, their ability to think is, is sometimes altered. Uh, they become more aggressive or more violent, um, not because they're by nature violent people, but just because they're in a situation where they're stressed out. Uh, they have a lack of resources themselves. They don't have people listening to them. Um, they, they're not getting the things that they need in order to get on the road to recover recovery or to feel better or, or okay. whatever it is that they need. Um, and then they're left with the only option they have is to um, act out violently or whatever. And then the nursing staff has to try to do their best to control that. If they don't have the time to give that patient the care they need, then it ends up in a situation where nurses get hurt. And you can see it happen all over the country. Yes, yes. Um, the, the response by the community, uh, despite um, I really consider propaganda on the part of the hospital um, uh, that um, where they're, they're kind of blaming the victim, I guess is the only way to, you know. Um, yet the response has been excellent in the community for the most part. I'm looking at letters in the Berkshire Eagle. Uh, there was one very, very good letter this week. Um, uh, so community, I, I would like to think, is solidly behind, I, I really feel it, solidly behind the nurses. I've, now that you've issued uh, lawn signs, I'm seeing them, people yeah. are starting to put them up. I hope to see more of them. Um, so um, people want to side with nurses. They want to be able to help out in this situation. What can the public do to uh, further the, no the, the cause that the nurses are um, fighting for right now? What, what um, you, one thing they could do is they can continue to write the wonderful letters of support to the, le okay. um, to the editor. Okay. Um, they can reach out to nurses that they know. Um, they can call David Phelps at 447-2750. You want to repeat um, that? That is 447-2750. Okay. And just let him know what your concerns are. Um, what you would like to see, um, that you want the nurses supported, that you want to make sure that you and your family have the appropriate level of care okay. um, without putting the nursing staff past what they can handle um, and putting you at, at increased risk. Right, okay. Now nurses have gone out um, in, uh, right now in Tufts, um, your brethren nurses are, are being locked out. Mm -hmm. um, it, w the situation is it going to repeat here? What do you what do you think? Uh, is the hospital um, kind of pushing nurses to uh, out? Are they because uh, they they talked recently about being prepared for a strike? Yes. What what is the odds of that happening? Uh, there's another negotiation session the 20th, coming up. Yeah. Um, what do you what do you predict uh, may happen? What, do, what is the feeling? Um, since November, the administration's negotiators um, repeatedly said something like, "If safe staffing is that important to you, we're willing to let you strike over it." Um, the nurses in general would like to just take care of. Our, we'd like to go to work. Sure. We'd like sure. to do a good job. Um, but across the hospital, hospital, hospital staff are being pushed to th that being the only option that they have left. Um, they're not being heard, they're not being listened to, um, they're not being met halfway. Um, so they're, they're left with uh, a community or, a, or an, an action that they, okay. you know. Okay, they don't want to do this, but it may be necessary uh, really in the, in the final analysis to protect their own patients yes. to go out on strike. Um, and with union activity, nurses is one of the only, um, or one of the few unions that actually advocate for somebody outside of their collective bargaining unit. So we often try to include patient safety measures in what we're negotiating for because as nurses, that's what we do. Of course, of course. Um, I'd also um, like you to know that the Berkshire Democratic Brigades, which is you know wholeheartedly behind, behind the nurses at BMC and elsewhere in the state, um, we're, um, we have, I, on th Thursday we have a table. Um, we, we are going to be circulating petitions that people can sign to show their support for the nurses. We hope that can help out. 
Um, we hope to encourage people to put up those lawn signs and to call David Phelps. We'll do whatever we can to support you because we consider labor to be our m most important constituent as, as you know, the, in the Democratic Party. Thank you and so we've much. Al we've always supported labor and we will continue to support labor. Um, so um, we'll also, oh, and uh, that's going to be um, July 20th, actually the day of that last negotiation. We will be there and hoping people will come by to show their support for the nurses by signing the petition. We'll also be at the NAACP gathering uh, on Saturday, July 22nd in Durant Park, what used to be called Pitt Park. We'll be there with those petitions again. Um, and that's on uh, July 22nd uh, from 1, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. So um, I hope people do whatever they can to make sure that, um, the, that they hear in the management offices that the community supports the nurses. And uh, I want to thank you for, very much for being here today. It's been a very, very um, informative interview, I think. And uh, I hope we can help to get the message out for you. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. Okay, very, very good.